today with a mini computer that is completely different from everything else that we have seen here on the channel especially because it has a Thunderbolt 4 port and it will allow us to connect to an external display lifting the limitations that this kind of computer has and in this particular case joining great performance with an external GPU we will have a compact machine with endless possibilities in terms of gaming now it comes with windows 11 pro and if you are going to get it i will leave a link down below so that you guys can check out the prices which i did surprise how low it was having in mind everything that it packs but if you have a machine with windows and it's not activated then don't forget to check out cdksales.com which is a platform that we have been using for the past few months and we will find official OM keys at a very affordable price. And there's also a coupon code RJCK that will give you 30% discount. A platform that is trusted. We have purchased and activated and great feedback. So link down below just in case you want to check that out. Now let's check out this B-Link, which is an awesome mini PC. First of all, the design is great, all built of this metallic enclosure, brushed aluminium in a space grey, so no plastics here whatsoever, everything is metallic and it's quite heavy, so it's a block right over here. It has these grills on both sides for air intake, it has a grill on the top with fabric feels and looks really nice as well, really elegant and at the back we can see the grills of the CPU cooler right over here. Now the air will get in from the bottom and it will cool down all the system. It has two cool down systems, one of which will cool down the motherboard, the SSD and the M.2 and then it also has the one that cools down the CPU and this makes this mini computer a machine that will not thermal throttle so we can push it to the maximum and it will be cool and it will not make much noise. Actually it's quite silent. Talking about the cooling system, I did open it up as soon as I had my hands on it. I was really curious to see the dual cooling system and the options that I had to to upgrade. Now the first option is to add a SSD, 2.5 inches SSD or mechanical hard drive up to 2 terabytes. If we remove three more screws then we will be able to access the main compartment where we will find the RAM which is DDR5 RAM and also the M.2 SSD. Now I did upgrade the RAM with Sabrent DDR5 RAM Rocket Plus, Rocket DDR5 4800 megahertz, two sticks, 32 gigs each and we are with a total of 64 gigs which is the maximum of this machine. I also upgraded the main storage with the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus which is the fastest on the planet, 7000 megabytes per second reads and on rise, just awesome, two terabytes which is also the maximum. So really easy to upgrade. In terms of specifications, this particular model has the Intel 12th generation i5 1240p which is a 12 core 16 threads at 4.7 gigahertz turbo, 16 gigabytes of RAM DDR5 which we can upgrade to 64 as we have seen, 500 gigs of SSD and VM some really good specifications for a mini computer. The connectivity at the back we will find two HDMI 2.0 which will give us 4K at 60 Hz and then we have two USB 3.0 and one 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection. So no gigabit, we are talking about 2.5 gigabit which we can take advantage if we already have a faster switch on our home. Now at the front we will have two USB 3.0 and then my favorite Thunderbolt 4 and we also have a headphone jack and the power button and also the clear commands which might be useful for this kind of machine. Performance wise on the original SSD I did perform the benchmark and we were getting roughly 3800 megabytes per second on reads, 2400 megabytes per second on Right, now in terms of Geekbench so that we can compare with other machines, we are talking about 1500 on single core score and 9200 on multi core score. And this puts this machine on par with my MacBook Pro 14 inches with the M1 Pro 
CPU, which is a machine that I use on a daily basis on the go. So this is side by side with the Mac. And I use that benchmark because Macs have been along the years more constant in terms of the benchmarks so that we have an idea of where we are. Now, if I compare with my Mac Studio, then the Studio is in a different league. We are talking about 1,750 single core score and 12,300 and multi core score. So we can see that it's on par with the MacBook Pro 14 inches, but it's a bit below the studio. You can also take a look at Cinebench where we can compare with other Intel and AMD CPUs. The score was 1,600 on single core score, 9,300 on multi core score. And this means that this machine is totally capable of video editing, some gaming, and all lots of tasks that require the CPU, we will be just fine. If we want virtual machines, for example, 64 gigabytes of RAM will be more than fine. Actually, 16 are great. Having the possibility of putting 64 just enhances the level of this machine. One of the limitations will be the GPU, which is an integrated GPU. Now, that's where the external GPU comes in place. If we take a look on the scores that we have before we have the external GPU, we will get on 3D Mark a score of 1400 and on OpenCL 14. So this means that in terms of GPU, we will be fine playing games like Overwatch 2 without external GPU. And I did put the graphics on minimum. We were getting roughly 100, 110 frames per second, playing at 1080 with graphics on minimum. Now I did play around with medium, high and ultra, and we were able to get to ultra at 45 to 50 -ish frames per second, which honestly was not the best experience. So I would play Overwatch in this particular case on a 1080, but on a lower specification. So I would say medium high and that would be it to get a great experience. So we can play games. It's not that we can't, but if we want to play something like Battlefield 2042, which is a really heavy game, then there's where we will find limitations. I was getting roughly 20 to 30 maximum frames per second and when we had action then just forget about it it was a bad experience so this kind of computer usually is not meant for that kind of gaming except this computer is different from the others now i did connect my external gpu which by the way for those who never heard about this it's really easy i just connected one cable which is the thunderbolt 4 cable then i installed the drivers after that i did shut down the machine I HDMI directly from the external GPU to the display, but I can connect display port, for example, if I want and have a higher refresh rate. And after that, I did start the machine and that was it. Everything was installed. And once we boot up, everything is ready to go and use it as a full-fledged desktop, which is the way that we have used laptops and so on and so forth. And at this moment, using this great mini computer. Now, this means that if we turn Battlefield 2042 again, which I did, and I put it at 2K, I was using a 3080 right over here, RTX Nvidia, and we were getting 2K Ultra around 90 to 100 frames per second, which is awesome. Now we could lower from 2K to 1080, but I do believe that this benchmark will show you the capability of the mini computer with the external GPU, which in this particular case is a 3080. But if you find that you don't need such a powerful GPU, you can come lower to a 3060, 3060 Ti, or you can take a look at the new generation 4070 Ti, 4080, 4090. By the way, I did try to put a 4070 Ti and a 4080 on this case, and I was not successful. If you want to check out the video about those two GPUs, I will try to leave them right away here. But in my particular case, this case is not compatible. So if you are going to get a 40 generation, then buy a case that it's a bit larger than this one. Now, I also played with Forza Horizon 5, which is a game that I really enjoyed. Those of you that are here on the channel for quite a while, you know that. And I did play around with 4K on extreme which was too much i was getting 40 to 60 frames per second and i do believe that this is not the best way to play so i did dial it down a little bit to ultra 4k and i was getting 60 to 70 
frames per second, which is a completely different story. Of course, if we lower the resolution to 2K, then I would probably get on ultra above 100, 120 frames per second, and probably that would be the best balance. But I wanted to see 4K, how was it to play with a mini computer and an external GPU. So I do believe, in conclusion, that Billing has done a great job. They have two models, this is the i5, and then they also have the i7, both of them with great specifications. And I do believe that with the expansion part of the Thunderbolt, it will open a lot of doors. I can purchase this machine today, and I can save during the few months ahead for an external GPU, which I know that in the future I will be able to upgrade. The same with the RAM, with the main SSD and with the second SSD. I know that in the future I can upgrade and take full advantage of a machine that already comes with a huge performance in terms of CPU, but that we can improve over time. And that is it. Hopefully in the future more manufacturers will take this approach because this single door right over here, Thunderbolt 4, which by the way, I would prefer if it was on the back, but I will not complain. It's here. It's better to be here than, than not to have at all. And I do believe that it's a great machine for the experience that I had for the past few days. It was a pleasure because we are using something really small and then we connect to something a little bit bigger and we have a beast. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Huerta George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one.